Auto Line's coverage from CES in Las Vegas is brought to you by our signature sponsor, Magna, and also by Bose and Gentex. Magna once again is at CES. Boris Shulkin is the Vice President of R&D at Magna International. And Boris, last year you had a very similar display to what we have behind us here, showing different powertrain modules that automakers can use, whether it's ICE, plug-in, full hybrid, battery electric, fuel cell. My understanding is you actually got a couple of contracts out of this from last year. What can you tell us? Who are the car companies? Yeah, that's right, John. And uh, thank you for mentioning this. Yes, that's right. The industry is really wondering in the last uh, couple of years where this electrification is coming together at what take rate is going to happen in the next five or ten years. And our building blocks approach, as you mentioned, is being paying off. So uh, uh, happy to report this year we have uh, a couple of the major awards uh, in this area. Uh, one of them is a uh, um, largest, uh, one of the largest Magna contracts and the certain largest transmission contracts that we've ever had. Uh, with the BMW uh, uh, between the uh, regular transmission and the hybrid transmission that allows our customer to uh, flex depending on the take rates between the different types of vehicles and, and within the same packaging gives the ability to uh, serve it with this right product. Uh, and the second contract is uh, what we call an MEB contract with Volkswagen uh, in China where we're delivering the e-drive system for fully electric vehicles. Um, I'm happy to report that uh, market is really responding to this and on both of these contracts we have a follow-up contract. Uh, we have a follow-up contract on the on the e-drive and on transmission. Unfortunately, I cannot reveal the, the OEMs at this time. You can't say who the car company That's is right, just yeah. yet. Maybe we'll get you here next year to talk about that. But hey, look, let's go on to the other part of the booth because there's some other interesting technology I want our viewers right, to see. Let's do it. Boris, I'm sitting in a seat for a display right now where you've got a camera that's monitoring how I'm looking and making sure that I pay attention on the road. Of course, this is very important for hands-free adaptive cruise control, but you've added a camera that looks on the outside of this too. Why were you doing that? Oh, that's exactly right, John. So the uniqueness of this system comparing to other driver monitoring systems that are you know, coming into the market today and available in some of the vehicles, as you know, is that it uh, uses the concept of fusion. The camera on the outside is able to pick up the information around you and understand the scenery around it and fuse that information together with what it knows about your behavior and it will make the vehicle behave differently depending on what it is. So for example, if you're driving at a highway at 50 miles an hour, the vehicle would expect different reaction from your distraction rather than if there is a truck in front of you uh, 10 feet away. So you're fusing with the car, looking out ahead, it's monitoring how I'm paying attention, putting that information together and then giving me warning signals or alerts. That's exactly right. So the system is becoming smarter at how it's going to react instead of just being a very prescriptive based on only your reaction, it's taking into account what's happening around you. Really interesting, Boris. You've got some interesting lighting here. Let's take a look at this. Let's go there. So I love this kind of display, very interesting how the lighting's moving, but there's some real technology behind this. What is it? So John, uh, what we're doing, this is another example of us taking what's happening in the consumer electronic industry and different technologies there and trying to bring it into the automotive. So what you see here is an example application of a micro LED technology that uh, gives uh, incredible flexibility to the designer in terms of how thin the product can be so you can see you can touch in the back. If I and touch it, you know, because the, the, the people watching right now, it's extremely thin. It's about that thick. Whereas what? It would probably be about that thick using normal lighting. Right. Essentially, that's correct. So essentially what it is, it's a flexible, uniform light source that allows incredible flexibility for the design of the packaging. Well, let's keep on moving here because we've got some more displays of this. When you say micro LED, how small are you talking? So they're really, really small. So if you look at this uh, light, it has almost the appearance of an OLED type of application, even though it's done with a really, really small micro LEDs that are placed very, very close to each other to create this uniform feel and look, but out of the really stable and affordable LED technology. And you know, you had mentioned flexibility. You've you've got these curved surfaces and the one thing that I love to show is this this blue line right here of lighting now. You tell me when anybody has seen how flexible and thin lighting is. Yeah. That 
it, that's right, John. So here's another example. That's what the substrate itself looks like, and you can tell you can essentially do anything to it what you could do with a piece of paper. So is each one of these little black dots on here, is that one of the, the micro LEDs? That is right, yes. So, I mean, they're, they're almost microscopic. You can barely see them, and you can place them much closer than that. That creates this incredible impression of the of uniform, uh, flexible light source. And, you know, i got to believe automotive designers love not just the flexibility of the, how it twists, but the flexibility of the kind of imaging that they can put up there. That's right. You can start thinking of this type of a light source not only as a replacement for a current products, but also you can start thinking of what the new product you can create out of it. So, for example, various HMI applications inside the vehicle, but also on the outside of the vehicle as new mobility starts coming into the, our lights. Okay, Boris, enough for the lighting. Let's look at this other display here. I see you've got a lot of cameras, and Magna is really well known for its camera work. And I also recognize this device here because I saw it a year ago as well. This is your solid state LiDAR, and I gotta ask you, are any car companies buying this yet? Yeah, great memory, John. So, uh, exactly right. So, about a year ago, we've announced the industry first uh, uh, award on a solid LiDAR production uh, that's uh, with Magna and uh, with our partner Innovis that we have with the, on the BMW pro, uh, program. And that work is going on right now as we speak. See, that's what I love showing you guys about this technology is it's just not pie in the sky, it actually ends up in production. And I know you've got, what, something with radar here too that we ought to talk about. Yeah, that's right, that's the piece over here. So um, a couple years ago we started talking about this. The idea back then was uh, Magna wanted to create the industry first digital imaging uh, radar. We've uh, successfully developed it with a startup and uh, we had so, you know, uh, several working system at a time. Um, now, what uh, I'm happy to announce this year, we have a uh, fully production ready version of the chip that's been taped out and uh, fully qualified. And uh, this is the first uh, 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 revision of the system with that new automotive qualified chip. You can see how small it is. For, and that's uh, that little piece in here. That's that is little that, guy, that's right. And so, what, it was analog before, and now it's digital, or how, what was it? That's right, so traditionally, all automotive radar today are analog based, based on what we call FMCW modulation. The digital radar, uh, such as this, allows for incredible uh, progress for safety, uh, important applications, where the interference mitigation is the key. This is like cell phones, right? They That's right. migrated from analog to digital? That's exactly right. So this is the same process that happened in the 90s to the cell phone going from an analog to CDMA and other di digital uh, modulations. This is what's happening in the automotive industry right now, moving from an analog to a digital. It revolutionized cell phones. Will this revolutionize radar? We believe so. Okay. Boris, thanks so much for your time today. Very interesting what Matt is doing. An impressive array of different technologies. Always a pleasure, John. Thanks. Tomorrow's vehicles will communicate with your house, make payments, even recognize you with the latest in digital vision, car-to-home automation, and vehicle-to-infrastructure technology. So consider Gentex for scalable features ready today based on tomorrow's emerging technology.